Loss of Earth and space short answer. The largest circular storm in our solar system is on the surface of which of the Jupiter. That's correct. Yes, I got it correct. Science Bowl is the most fun competition there is. Unlike other written exams, Science Bowl you have to buzz in to say your answers. It's sure to get your adrenaline going, so I highly recommend you stick around for the rest of the video. Science Bowl has two divisions for middle and high schoolers. It's a team-based competition. There are technically five people on the team, but only four play at a time. Science Bowl has four, five subjects, math, physics, biology, chemistry, and earth and space science. In addition, there's a category called energy, but energy is really just physics, chemistry, or biology. Sometimes they have some neural network questions, but there really isn't a need to do that much extra preparation for energy itself. The top team in every region qualifies for the National Science Bowl, which is an all-expenses-paid trip to Washington, D.C., and it is an absolutely amazing event. You can check out my experience in this video over here. The link will be in the description. Okay, so now let's move on to some resources that you can use to actually prepare for Science Bowl, starting off with biology. So at the middle school regionals level, if you're new to biology, you haven't learned that much already, there's a good book called Life Science, and it's by Prentice Hall. And this is, again, a very introductory level book. Next off, there's also some other resources you can check out here. In addition, there's something called OpenStax, as well as LibreText, which are basically, they have free versions of these textbooks, and they are completely legal. So they have free textbooks, and some of these can, price tags can get pretty hefty. Okay, next off is Campbell Biology. Now, this is the most popular biology book, and it's good at the middle school nationals or high school regionals level. And as you can see here, $260, that's a lot. So oftentimes, what you can do is you can buy previous editions of the book or used copies for much, much cheaper. And also, in addition, like I mentioned, OpenStax and LibreTex have free online textbooks that are really great alternatives. For example, over here, this is a, something from OpenStax, as you can see here. It's very much like a textbook, except it's online. Now, how do you actually approach these textbooks? They're giant. They have lots of information. They can be a little daunting at first. Well, first of all, it can often be a good idea to check out some videos to get a good overview of the topic. Crash Course is a good source of videos, and there's some other ones I've linked here as well you can check out. Now, once you've gotten a good overview, now once you're reading the textbook, I recommend you go really thoroughly and slowly through it and don't try and rush. Because the better understanding you have of a concept, the faster you'll be able to buzz in the actual science world round. Okay, so how should you actually approach reading these textbooks? Well, one strategy that I like to do is, let's say for example here, dicots are characterized by the presence of two cotyledons. So I can come up with a question in my mind. What type of angiosperms have two cotyledons? And then I answer in my brain, dicots. And this way, not only does it increase your comprehension, it also makes it so that your recall is very quick. There's a difference between knowing something and being able to answer it five seconds after the question and after a lot of deliberation versus knowing exactly what the answer is with even the slightest clue. Next off, we're going to look at some high school nationals resource. And this is really, really advanced stuff. Undergraduate to college graduate level, it's really advanced. There is some joke that I heard people saying that they literally just take research papers and they take questions off of those. So that's some good ways to prepare for that. Or there are many concept specific books you can check out like molecular biology, etc. The links are here. By the way, all these resources I'm mentioning are on the website omegalearn.org slash science bowl. Link will be in the description. You can check out. It should also be linked to the tag. You can click on the I in the top right corner. And last but not least, it's important to practice. So to do this, you can use the questions that are at the end of these books. There are many great questions you can test your knowledge with. In addition, there's many official science bowl questions I've linked here you can practice with. Now let's move on to physics. Starting off with middle school regionals, if you're new to physics, a good book at the middle school regional level is Conceptual Physical Science by Paul Hewitt. Also, there's also OpenStax High School Physics, which is a good alternative. 
because it covers it covers pretty much everything the same except it's completely free and available online as well as library text with so some great free online resources that you can check out which are completely legal of course next moving on to middle school nationals or high school regionals these are similar to ap level roughly the first book we have here is physics by Giancoli. Another book that's also commonly used is Halliday Resnick Walker, over as you can see over here. And this is the easier version of Halliday Resnick Crane, which I'll talk about later. And again, there's Libre text and OpenStax books as well, which are, can be useful. In addition, there's also some good videos you can check out for all levels that will give you a nice overview of the concepts. Like there's this a, a playlist over here that's mentioned. There's also some videos over here. Okay, now moving on to the high school nationals level. And th these are very advanced. A great book that's extremely popular at this level, has many very advanced concepts, is Halliday Resnick Crane, which is not the same as this Walker counterpart. In addition, there's this book called University Physics. In addition, there's many subtopic books you need to learn for physics, like modern physics, new cosmic onion, which is particle physics, etc. Even MIT Open Courseware is useful for this. And again, there's some good science school questions you can check out for practicing. Now on to chemistry. At the middle school regionals level, there's a good book called Modern Chemistry. This is similar to something you would find in a high school chemistry or chem honors type level. And there's some videos here to go along with it, which can be useful. And also in addition, Crash Course Chemistry is a great series that's really helpful as well. Also, again, there's Liberty Tech, which is really a really good site has so many free um, textbooks which are just great for learning especially if you're on a budget now we're going to move on to the high school regionals or middle school nationals level which is again ap level the first book over here is zumdahl and a slightly har harder version of this book which has some more advanced stuff is called atkins physical chemistry also in addition there's some there's some websites which have summaries of these chapters. So they're good for reviewing, taking notes afterwards, which can be useful. At the high school nationals level, there's a lot of organic chemistry, as well as some things like inorganic and physical chemistry. There's many resources over here you can check out. Now onto earth science, which really should be earth and space science. At the middle school regionals level, a good book is Glenco Earth Science. But a slightly more advanced book, which is the most popular one, is Foundations of Earth Science by Tarbuck and Lutkins. In addition, you can find summaries of these chapters, which are good for reviewing afterwards and improving comprehension on this website that I've linked over here. But the thing is, it's not just Earth Science. It's also astronomy, the space aspect of it. So... You can check out this book called Astronomy Today by Macmillan over here, which is the most popular book. But there's also another good book called Foundations of Astronomy. In addition, there's Crash Course Astronomy, a great series, as well as summaries. Now, which one's more important, Earth Science or Astronomy, you might be asking. At the regionals, lower regionals level, it's mostly Earth Science. But as your level gets higher and higher, they tend to include a lot more astronomy questions. In fact, the high school nationals, Nearly like more than 50% of the questions are astro astronomy, even some astrophysics stuff. Now on to math. Now if you're in competition math, the science level math questions will feel quite easy for you. At the middle school regionals level, it's basically very similar to the content in AMCA or, or even school math for that matter. The questions are very basic, but the, for the most part. But the hard part is being able to buzz and do them very quickly. So some good resources, the Mastering AMC 8 book, Competition Math for Middle School, Pre-Algebra, and Volume 1, all of the AOPS books. In addition, for practicing speed, you can check out For the Win. It's good countdown practice for buzzing quickly, as well as Math Counts Trainer and Alchemist. Okay, now at the middle school nationals level, you can check out the Mastering AMC 1012 book, the AOPS Introduction Series, and some other AOPS books as well. But if you're going to do high school regionals, there's also going to be some calculus, some pre-calculus, and even statistics. So you can check out some resources to learn them over here. And one thing that I really like is 3 Blue 1 Rounds Calculus Series. It's a really, really great series. I highly recommend you look at, look at it.
Okay, now on to high school nationals, which is really advanced stuff, linear algebra, multivariable, differential equations, and there's many other stuff too, like analysis, topology, there's all kinds of questions. It's just whatever they want to put in high school nationals, they can. It's really advanced. Okay, so now we're going to talk about some practice rounds. So these are ones that you can do with your team to practice buzzing together. So first of all, we have the middle school sample questions. These are official sample questions from previous years. And in addition, we have the high school sample questions, which have all the high school questions from previous years. Except for some reason, they have this weird thing where they don't include the last three years of questions. So it's a little bit outdated, but it's still great practice. In addition, there are good invitationals, like the MIT Science Bowl Invitational and Prometheus and the Sony. But beware, because some of these are really, really hard, much harder than the official science bowl practice questions. There's also some books like RNA science bowl ones and some other ones you can check out over here. By the way, if you know any other good resources, be sure to leave them in the comment down below. Now let's talk about some tips to buzz fast. You have your knowledge base now that you've used all these resources, but how do you buzz fast? What science bowl is really about? If you want to learn that, you should check out this video right over here. Thanks for watching.